I'm talking about some very, very smart, extremely accomplished people who all did the same thing. This is why I'm such a fan of taking some space from all action. This is actually something I learned from Rick Rubin. You know, Rick has a practice. He'll spend a good amount of time, you know, just sitting and thinking or lying down and thinking. And I, it didn't occur to me at the time, but later after I returned, I thought back to our first guest episode of my podcast. I host a guy named Carl Dyseroth, who's probably the, the finest bioengineer on the planet. And he's a true genius. He's a super, he's like the Michael Jordan of neuroscience. And Carl described a practice that he does after he puts his kids to sleep of where he sits deliberately, sits completely still and forces himself to think in complete sentences. And this set off an, a light in my head when I realized Rick does a form of this and Carl does a form of this. If you read the new Elon Musk book, they talk about Elon doing a form of this. The great... Richard Feynman, physicist, Nobel Prize winner, talked about going into flotation tanks and doing a form of this. Einstein did a form of this. So what are we talking about? So I'm a neuroscientist, but I'm certainly not as smart as any of those guys. What we're talking about is body still, mind active. Now, I've become into increasingly curious about psychedelic therapies. The practice is essentially um, macrodose psilocybin, but with the eye mask on, completely still, mind very active. Okay. Contrast that to a different behavior slash protocol that I'm very familiar with, which is I like to do long runs or rucks on Sunday. Body very active, mind not directed at anything in particular. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do it without a book or podcast. Sometimes I do it with a combination of both. So there are these two states of mind and body that I find fascinating to the point of being intriguing, to the point of having modified what I do now because they, they, they're the inverse of one another. Body completely still or close to completely still, mind very active. Could be with psilocybin, but that's not the protocol I'm recommending. I'm talking about some very, very smart, extremely accomplished people who all did the same thing. The other is body very active. Mind isn't still, but is not deliberately um, channeled to any particular linear kind of story or something like that. There's a state in sleep where our body is literally paralyzed and the brain is extremely active. It's called rapid eye movement sleep. So I'm sort of raising a flag for this potential protocol slash practice. I don't have any peer reviewed science to support what I'm about to say, but I have enough examples of extremely accomplished people now uh, in front of me to realize that there's something special about divorcing mind and body function temporarily, deliberately sitting there and just thinking. And recently I had a conversation with the great Paul Conti and the ability to think and to access the unconscious. Paul refers to the unconscious as the supercomputer of the brain. For the, un the unconscious mind and the conscious mind are always in a dialogue. But here's the theory, here's the, the hypothesis that when we bring our body into states of stillness in REM sleep, in these deliberate states that I just described that these other people actively engage in and have for a long time, that the unconscious mind can start to take over a larger percentage of that conversation and we have access to new ideas, new ways of structuring thought, et cetera. Anyway, I just wanted to throw this up on the wall because it's always fun to talk about new things and kind of what's coming, what I think is coming next. I think if I were to make a prediction, I think in the next two years, you're not just gonna hear about meditation, non-sleep, deep rest, but also body still mind active states to access different aspects of our unconscious and cognition. And I must say that we do this with the phone, that when you, we sit and we're just scrolling, yeah, we're, we're, we're more or less body still, mind active, but guess what? None of it's coming from within. It's all coming from the outside. So whether or not it's psilocybin in the eye mask or, or Carl sitting there, eyes closed, deliberately still thinking, or Feynman in the, in the salt equilibration chamber, you know, the, the float flotation tank or, or Rick lying there thinking whatever it is he happens to be thinking, whatever amazing album he's going to now, you know, help produce, um, or Einstein. I mean, you know, we can think of the phone and the scrolling as, as lending itself to less ability to focus in ADHD, but just the real crime, the real insult to humanity for me, the real cost is what about all the creative imagination of things that come from inside that could be generated by by people in that time? So I, I'm I've started doing a practice of 20 minutes a day of just sitting and eyes closed. Typically, sometimes it's right as I wake up, but usually it's not. And just trying to think 
about certain topics and hold those topics in a kind of a linear way. Some people might think of this as like completely um, wacko woo, uh, new agey stuff, but th the list of names I, I read off there are people that do that and have been doing this for a long time and attribute this practice as one of the major sources of their best ideas mm. is a, a non-trivial list.